What's up, everyone? Welcome back for an edition of Something Something About Music. We've all been there before, right? We've all wanted to change our names to something better. I mean, we were born, well, at least some of us were born. Seems like some of us or a lot of us were created in an experimental lab to see how screwed up we can make some humans. But anyway, right before we were born or after, our parents gave us these normal names like Tony and Michael and whatever the hell that is. How the hell do you even pronounce that? Guys, guys, guys. We all want to be like this guy. What's your name? Frankenstein. Why can't we call ourselves Frankenstein or Captain Cherry Cruncher Bumblebee something or other? These bands as mentioned by BuzzFeed had the same idea. And I'm really glad some of them changed their minds. These are bands that had some of the worst names possible before they came to their senses. Up first is the Google Dolls. The Google Dolls, who were known for their hit songs like Iris, Name, and Slide, were once called the Sex Maggots. That's pretty disgusting thinking about maggots having sex. Maggots alone are disgusting just thinking about them eating rotting flesh. But to add in sex in rotting flesh? They could have called themselves I Eat Rotting Flesh and it wouldn't have been as disgusting as thinking about maggots having sex in that rotting flesh. Maybe it's not that bad. At least they're having sex. Story goes that a club owner refused to put the name Sex Maggots on the marquee, so they had to change it. They picked the new name by looking through a True Detective magazine and settling for Google Dolls. I don't even have any idea what a Google Doll is, so let me know in the comments. But there seems to be something going on with these guys. First, it's rotting flesh and maggots having sex. And then it's looking through a True Detective magazine. I'm just saying. I think we need to check these guys' homes for Jeffrey Dahmer posters. The Spice Girls originally called themselves Touch. Don't forget to touch that subscribe button or else I'm gonna touch you. Oh, guess what, f oh, Thomas, boy? Oh, you're kicking oh, off four grand oh, of me every month. Oh, I don't oh, care if you're in oh, Deer Valley or Death Valley. Oh, four grand every oh, month. And if you ever mention a word of this to Tony, oh, I'll stick this up your oh, and pull a trigger till it out your eye. Sorry, that's my Brooklyn Italian side coming out. I can't help it. Melanie Chisholm, otherwise known as Mel C, said that the band was pretty bland. Get it? <laughs> she said they didn't really find their image and style until they actually discovered their band name and persona as the Spice Girls. The group consisted of Sporty Spice, Posh Spice, Baby Spice, Ginger Spice, and Scary Spice. There was a sixth member called Colleague Powder. <laughs> Forget it. The persona and name of the group consist of all their different personalities. Jerry Hollowell, a.k.a. Ginger Spice, came up with the idea for the group, and they switched their name when they switched management. Creed was first called Naked Toddler. Really, guys? Were you going for a literal image there, or a more metaphorical meaning? Either way, not a good look. Mark Tremonti, who was a guitarist and vocalist in the band, is the person that came up with the name. He picked the name after seeing a headline in a newspaper with the words. What is it with these bands? A true Detective Magazine and newspaper headlines with naked kids? Later that night after a show, the name wasn't exactly taken on in a positive way, so they changed it to Creed. I wonder why the other name wasn't so popular. It doesn't exactly roll off the lips like Creed does. Oh wait, that doesn't really roll off the lips either. Who wants to admit that Naked Toddler is their favorite band? And how would you handle the merchandising on that? It would kind of give new meaning to the song with arms wide open. Maybe throw in some Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy reading so you can get more wholesome names for your band. The next marketing genius is Limp Biscuit with Fred Durst. Fred Durst originally called the band Blood Fart. I'm seeing a theme with these names. Sex, Touch, Naked, Limp, Blood Fart. I mean, although it doesn't have to be seen as strictly sexual, it can be. Maybe they need some more fiber in their diet. Other names that the band considered were Gimp Disco, Bit Piglet, and Split Slit. Durst said he wanted it to have the same roll off of the tongue as Led Zeppelin, but be so odd that you would have a hard time forgetting it. He also said that they never took their name or purpose very seriously, considering the chances of succeeding were slim to none at that point. Well, obviously they didn't take it that seriously. My parents felt the same when they named me. My mother probably still feels that way. If it takes me the next 40 years, I swear I'm gonna be something. Next up is Coldplay. This is another story where a band named themselves right before their first gig. They came up with the name Starfish, strictly out of necessity, an hour before their gig. I mean, how long were you a band before you thought about actually naming yourselves? Did you guys just meet that day and book a gig and say, hey, we need a name that doesn't suck? I know, Starfish. Chris Martin said they formed the band because girls weren't attracted to them. It must be all that big Starfish energy. Sexy. As he says, just sitting in his chair. Maroon 5, or 7, 
was once called Kara's Flowers. And can you emasculate yourself anymore? Maybe call yourselves Katie Socks or Maggie Snotrag instead if you didn't feel any less of a man from calling yourselves Karis Flowers. Van Halen were known as Rat Salad at first. Eddie Van Halen named the band after the title of a Black Sabbath song. Now, I don't necessarily think it's a horrible name for a band. Actually, who am I kidding? It is a horrible name for a band. But picture a rat playing a guitar while having a piece of lettuce in its mouth on a t-shirt. That's actually kind of cool. Can you imagine being in a band and hoping women are gonna react the same way they do with other bands when they're thinking about a rat salad? <laughs> Nickelback was known as Village Idiot in the beginning. Some people still think that's their name. Although Nickelback might not be a good name either considering how hated they seem to be in some circles. And by some circles, I mean anyone who likes music. Look, just put your little hand back in the cash register and give me my $2.75 back, please. Chad. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm gonna kick 100% of your ass. Speaking of Black Sabbath, the band was first called Polka Tulk Blues Band. That doesn't exactly fit with the image of biting the head off of a bat. Seated by his infamy. I look evidently through an unconscious bat on the stage, and he thought it was a rubber bat, whatever, and he picked it up and bit the head off. And Sean's going, Dummy, it's real. I'm going, what? Polka Tulk was a brand name of talcum powder that Ozzy Osbourne's mother used at the time. Was that a little foreshadowing of what Ozzy would partake in later on? Oh, excuse me. Just a little allergies. Green Day was once called Sweet Children. Sweet Children doesn't exactly scream rock. It screams more singing about the Lord Christian music type stuff. They went the exact opposite route when they named themselves Green Day after the Sticky Icky. Green Day is Bay Area slang for hanging out and smoking weed. <laughs> I can hear my hair growing. Speaking about Christian music, Katy Perry was once known as Katie Hudson. I don't think it's a crazy name and she's not a band. I just wanted to show this clip. They're all amazing lovers of course and they are. I, I want to have sex with all of them after I get out of this place. <laughs> no. This doesn't sound too Christian after her first album was Christian music. The Bee Gees were once called the Rattlesnakes. I can see the resemblance. Kinda sounds like a gang from West Side Story. Not exactly a gang I would be scared of though. I mentioned in another video right here on the top 10 boy bands of all time that the new kids on the block were originally called Nanook, which is really close to this. Blink-182 was first known as Duct Tape. No, not Duct Tape, but Duck Tape. And finally, this band was first known as Pen Cap Chew. I guess there were some drugs on the end of that pen cap, and that's when they became Nirvana. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned absolutely nothing. I think I'm going to change the name to my channel to Eating a Rat Salad While Maggots Have Sex on a Starfish Ending in a Blood Fog. It rolls right off the tongue. Well, we'll see. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.